Hi guys, it's Nikki Nicole and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you what my spring garden looks like here in Zone 7 Before I give you the tour, I want to give you a little backstory on how my spring garden came to be. Um, I actually hadn't had, I hadn't planned to have a spring garden. Last year was really my first year getting into garden. We've had a garden for about the past maybe 10 to 12 years, but my husband pretty much took care of all that. And we'd have the basics like tomatoes and cucumbers and as time progressed we would add maybe one or two extra things in there like maybe one year I think we grew okra with that and another year we might have done um, bell pepper but it was never really a big garden. The main staple was always cucumbers and tomatoes and I loved it every summer I looked forward to it. But in 2019 I started to realize how if something happened and we couldn't access the grocery stores, um, we wouldn't really be able to feed ourselves. So I wanted to get more into gardening and canning and more just food, self, more self-sufficiency, but also food sustainability and being able to be prepared. I wouldn't necessarily say that I am a prepper, um, but I am getting into preparedness. So last year was really my first year getting into garden. We expanded past our main garden which was an in-ground garden here in North Carolina at least in my zone anyway my area we have hard red clay soil and over the years we've added compost to it we've added things to it to try to break it up but it's still a nightmare every year dealing with and last year I realized that no more but I digress so in order to expand it instead of doing just a traditional in-ground bed we decided to add on a few raised beds and so I did document it, unfortunately. Um, I do have a few clips here and there, but I did not document my journey by video, and I wish I had. Um, I wish I had just started hitting record sooner. But the summer went well. I had my fails, of course. Um, none of my seedlings, every single one of my seedlings died last year, last for the summer garden. Um, I tried again in the fall, and this is where, this is how my spring garden began, actually. Last September, we went out of town for a few days, and I thought my seedlings would be okay while we were out of town for those few days, because they, they were doing okay. They were, they were thriving before we left. But when we got back, every single one of my seedlings had died except for six. I had planted three different kinds of kale. I had collards going. I had um, different lettuces going. I, I, it was a lot. I had about three trays and each tray had about I think 70, 70 or 72 cells in it full of things and it all died and I just I almost gave up. I almost gave up and then in October something said just throw some seeds in the ground to see what happens. It wasn't really cold here yet. That's one thing about North Carolina is that we have pretty mild seasons and the winters aren't too cold. Our fall actually lasts through I would say the end of December um, because when it comes to spring garden it's pretty hard here to have a, a quote unquote traditional spring garden with like your brassicas and things of that nature because it gets hot so quickly. So those types of things work better in my area at least to start in the fall, to grow in the fall. And yeah that that it didn't think I didn't think that would be possible for me last year. So I went ahead and threw the seeds in the ground in in beginning to mid October I just threw it in the ground to see what happened. Um, we put some hoop tunnels over the raised beds. I'll show you those in a minute. I have taken the plastic off by now because it got hot and I didn't want everything just to, to die so quickly. So I have taken the plastic off of them but you can at least see the construction. If I can find the little clip or picture I will throw it in um, as I'm showing it to you so you can see how it looked with the plastic on at least. But yeah I threw seeds in the ground and to my surprise in December we actually had lettuce. We had lettuce growing that we could start cutting on and eating in our house in the in the middle of December we were having fresh lettuce from our garden and a few weeks later I was actually pulling radishes out. I'm like what? This is actually working. Now none of the other things like the kale and the Swiss chard, none of that was able, I wasn't able to pull it, could like do a cut and come again to any of that things. They had come up, they had sprouted, 
um, but they weren't big enough yet. So yeah, let me show you what the garden looks like now. Today is April 18, 2021. Um, it's been warm here for, I would say about a month and a half. We've had some good weather, mild weather, which is great because we've only had one day that I think it got up to 80 degrees. Most days have been 75 degrees and below. This week is a little cooler. We're going to be averaging around between 65 and 70 degrees. And some nights are going to be, well, most nights are going to be down the 40s, some nights in the upper 30s. But I think that's what it is allowing me to actually have a spring garden along with my huge fail last September. So here we go. Okay guys, here is a quick overview of my spring garden. Yeah, you can see the hoops in the back. I've taken the plastic off. I'll show you how how they look when we get up there, when we get a little closer. They are hinged hoop tunnels. But this first bed is it was a it, it was a fail and 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 a success all in one. This is my onion and garlic. The part of the bed that looks bare. This is actually, I actually have onion in there. It's really hard to see because they are still so, so tiny. But I did, I threw onion seeds down here last, last fall and none of them, absolutely none of them came up. So what I did, I actually did some winter sowing in the milk jugs with the seeds and they sprouted they sprouted prolifically so about I guess about a month ago I came and pulled them all out and put them in the ground they're not really growing yet but they haven't died so yeah I'm feeling good about that the, the fact that they haven't died lets me know that they might give me something if they don't have time to bulb up then hey at least I have a lot of onion chives huh <laughs> okay over here this is my garlic and I do apologize for the light this it was a little cloudy out here and then the Sun came beaming but the taller two or three rows of garlic in the front that you see I threw that in the garden last November thinking I was like way late it was right before Thanksgiving and everybody was saying that they were putting their garlic in in, in October and I'm like oh my gosh I'm behind I'm behind because this bed wasn't even built this wasn't even a part of our summer garden this is a part of our expansion we're still expanding but this was the last part of the expansion so my husband got the bed in I got the garlic in and the second row that you see the garlic it looks much better I actually didn't throw it in the garden until February I had some extra garlic in the house I put the clothes out here just to see what it would do not thinking thinking it would be too late and lo and behold it's doing better than what I put in last fall so yeah this year I'm gonna do this experiment again and see what works better for me and if planting more like January February works better for me I'm gonna start that from here on out but we'll see how this year goes and I'll experiment again this fall and we'll take it from there Now we're going to move over all of this nice freshness that you see. All these lush, this is my lettuce. Granted, it did not look like this over the winter. It was much, much smaller. It is tight in there. I know it is tight, but I planted it so closely because I was following the cut and come again method, which worked really well for us over the winter. It gave us fresh lettuce all throughout the winter. But when the heat came last month, yeah, it, it took off. The lettuce really took off. So it's at the point now that as I come out, instead of just cutting leaves off of each piece, I'm just starting to pull whole heads of lettuce. And it's growing so quickly now, I'm going to have to not only pull heads of lettuce for us, but I'm going to have to start pulling for, for family, friends and family and start giving some away before this starts to bolt because I know the heat will be back in about another week and a half two weeks so I don't want to lose this so I'd rather give it away and let it be enjoyed than let it all go to seed I will try to save some of the seeds but yeah it's time to uh, get through this lettuce but yeah I don't remember the varieties I wish I could tell you I know I have tags in there but they are let's say I can't read them anymore now I got to show you this 
these little beauties here are some radishes and a few beets that seeds that I threw in the ground last month um, when I pulled the last of my radishes out I threw more seeds in and I threw some beets, beets in just to see what would happen they aren't growing too quickly depending upon when other things go in they will probably end up coming out but I might have either some baby radishes or at least some radish leaves by the time we redo this bed or at least I redo the bed for the summer garden but look at all this beautiful 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 lettuce please excuse my shadow as if you see here this taller piece this is lettuce um, and the smaller in between that is spinach and I don't think I put that in until maybe December January thinking knowing that it wouldn't come up it wouldn't sprout then but I put it in so that it would be ready to come up as soon as the heat hit us and that is exactly what it did it did sprout in the winter time it just really didn't start growing until the heat came so I don't know how long that's going to stay how long it'll last before it goes uh, you can see some of the leaves are yellowing I have started fertilizing but I haven't been doing much to these beds because most of this stuff is going to get pulled up pulled out by the end of the month getting ready to put things in for the summer garden so I don't want to baby things too much because I have to come back in as you can see since these are raised beds the soil has settled I have to come back in and put some new compost on top um, but yeah so I don't want to do too much okay guys here you can see this part is the actual hoop tunnel is a hinged hoop tunnel as you can see I've taken the plastic off already the plastic came over I think it was oh my gosh I don't remember the grade it was a heavy grade plastic but it's the gray plastic that they recommend for greenhouses the clear kind it didn't look too clear though but they said it was clear um, but it was came over and then my husband attached it here with some furring strips going straight down and we did it that way in case we had to come back and if we had a really cold winter and add another layer of plastic and the other layer would have been above this one and just would have attached on further out on this piece of wood but it was great because in the winter when I wanted to come out and get some lettuce or whatever I wanted to get but mainly that's all I could get in the winter was the lettuce or if I wanted to vent the hoop tunnels to get some air circulating on them so that they would have some strength to them all I had to do was come and pick them up and prop them on a piece of wood like this they're very sturdy guys this is not a uh, light um, so what I would do would prop them up I had uh, several different pieces of uh, size woods that I would prop these up on um, but although light wasn't really an issue well it really light was an issue but prop popping the propping them up did not give extra light the propping up was mainly for access to the food mainly the lettuce um, or to get air circulating on the plants one of the major problems with this was where these beds or where this garden is actually located because we have pine trees on the back side of our property um, this is not our property it does not belong to us if it did we'd have them either thinned out or cut down by now but they are really tall pine trees and in the winter time when the sun is lower in the sky they shade out this part of the property a lot um, and I, I hadn't taken the time to think about that because I never thought about winter gardening before I never even had a fall garden before so I really I didn't know knowing what I know now my winter garden won't be in the same spot we do plan on making all of our beds this same size so we should at least be able to use these hoop tunnels wherever we decide to put our winter garden this coming winter uh, or winter 2021-22 20, but that was a major problem I think that if I would had more sun on these hoop tunnels with the heat that it would gather during the day and not having to water that often I actually would have been able to grow food during the winter at least here in my zone 7b garden um, if you're in a colder climate I don't know how much if you'd be able to grow it might just be a matter of growing before and then preserving it over the winter which was actually my original goal was to get it grown and then just preserve it or keep it going or keep it alive over the winter 
but all of my seedlings died, so I didn't have that option. But I didn't quit when they died. As you can see, I threw the seeds down and I have this. I ended up with a spring garden that I have, <laughs> I did absolutely no work for this year. It was just there ready and waiting for me, which gives me ideas for more experimentation for next year. But that's another video. Okay, let's move on to the other beds. Okay guys, in the second bed, I have carrots on both ends. I have some, on this end I have some um, purple cabbages thrown in that basically I picked those cabbages up and when we were getting the stuff for the hoop tunnels, they were on clearance. They looked awful. I brought them home. I said, let me see if I can save them. I babied them for about two weeks. Got so busy doing other things. Totally forgot about them. And I put them in the ground in like December. I did not think they would live. I really did not think they would live. But then come January, they hadn't died. They hadn't grown, but they hadn't died. I was like, well, maybe there's hope for them. So, uh, yeah, I know that by the time I get ready to put my other stuff in that goes in this garden, they won't have time to head up by then. As you can see, because they're still pretty small. Um, but um, I'm thinking about a little experimentation with those as well and I'll tell you about those a little later. Um, in the middle I have some garlic. In the middle I have some broccoli that I threw in. Once again these were seeds. These were seeds. You can see some are smaller than others. That's because um, I noticed that some of the seeds didn't come up so in December I threw some more seeds in the ground and you see what we have. Of course the, the smaller ones are the seeds that I threw in the ground in, in December and the larger ones are actually the ones that I threw in the ground in October. They had come up, they just weren't growing when it got really cold and the days were really short. So, um, I, we're not going to get any heads from these. We do have one. Um, I do not believe, I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to get any heads of broccoli from these. We, I see one. Where'd he go? Right there. Now, if you can see him, he's trying to head up. Um, I've had a couple of the other ones try to um, start to make heads, but then it got hot and yeah, they just went to flower. So I just plucked them and ate them right out here because I'm not sure how many of you know, but you can actually eat the broccoli when it starts to flower. It's really delicious. I know that because I ate it. <laughs> okay, and here on this end I have some green cabbage that I threw in. Bought at the same time as when I bought the purple or the red cabbage. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know. It looks purple. It could be called red cabbage. Either way, I bought the green at the same time. It's not going to have time to head up by the time I get my stuff for the summer garden in here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to try the same experiment with them, but if I do, I will take you along for the journey. And here are more carrots. These are starting to get bigger. I know they look really tight. I did thin them out. Um, I planted them so thickly because everybody had said carrots are really hard to germinate and I had never grown carrots before, so I, I threw a lot of seeds down. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with germination, so this year, I won't put as many down because I thin these out and they're still pretty thick. They're not so thick where they're not growing. They are growing, but the soil has settled so much, they really don't have much room down below to grow down. So I'm going to let these go for about another two, three weeks and pull them up. And um, we'll eat what we have. Food is food, whether it's big or small, as long as it tastes good, I really don't care how it looks. Okay, now, excuse the shakiness, but I'm walking on hills of dirt and all of that. In this bed, I have more cabbages that I put in. You can see some of these are a little bigger, but they're still, we're not going to have time to get these headed up before I get ready to throw my other things in. Um, you'll see something mixed in there. It looks like it's kale. 
Um, I thought I put collard seeds down here. I may have come back at another time and threw curly kale down. Who knows? I was just throwing seeds down last, last, last fall and winter. So I'm thinking I came back at some point and threw some curly kale seeds in here and that's what came up. Or maybe it's, I don't know. I honestly don't know, but I'm going to let it go and I'll, I'll let it go until the end of the month. And when I have to come back in here and throw some more compost because this bed has settled a lot on this end. Not sure why it settles so much more than the other two beds. Um, but yeah, I got to come back and, and throw some more, some more compost in all the beds, but especially this one to get it ready for, for everything that's going in for the summer garden. Because um, if I remember my plan right, I think I'm going to have tomatoes in this bed this year. Um, but yeah, let's go on down. And in the middle, I have some catnip. Um, why do I have catnip here? Because I tried to start some herbs in cups last year, and Jay, they just did absolutely awful. And then I noticed in the fall, some of the things that actually grown, it well, a few of them, only a few out of, I think, 12 cups, but three of them actually grew and survived. But one of them was catnip. So I threw them in here. Of course it didn't grow until the heat hit and when the heat hit it started just going crazy so i'm gonna have to get this out of here and get this planted somewhere else because i do not want any little kitty cats coming to make this their litter box um and in the middle i have some parsley in there it's hard to see because it's hidden by the catnip and hidden way over there somewhere and i'll see if i can find it is some rosemary um i'll go to the other side see if we can see it and all of this see my beautiful kale this is all beautiful kale right here yeah I will see if I can find at least a picture of how this looked March 8th I threw in another purple cabbage. I had an extra one, didn't have any room for it, so I threw it in here. It's mixed in with all the Swiss chard. All the Swiss chard and what again? Some more green cabbages. Yeah. So, let me take you around to the other side, see if we can see this rosemary. Hopefully it's still living over here under all this shade. Um, yeah, looks like it's surviving barely I'm not sure if anybody noticed this earlier but I have two large piles of wood chips in my yard we have been using that as a base in our garden underneath on top of the cardboard but underneath the soil or the compost blend that we had this comes from a huge willow oak that we had cut down last fall we had it cut down because it, it did provide great shade but it had gotten so big that we were scared it was going to fall because of the way it was made um it was one tree but it had grown it looked like two trees that had grown together when it was actually one tree and we were scared it was going to split in the middle and if it come down if it come down on our house it definitely would have crushed our house if it had gone across the street depending upon which way it went it could have crushed one of our neighbors house across the street so we had it cut down um, and this isn't even all of the wood this is just some of uh, this was like from the last load and I think that pile right there is from having the stump ground down so yeah it was a huge tree yeah, that's my spring garden in my zone 7b garden here in North Carolina and I did absolutely no work this spring to get. So basically I'm saying don't give up on yourself. And failures are not always failures. Uh, failures could be a lesson to help you learn something new. Every failure is to, to help you learn something new. But I never thought I could have an actual spring guard with any type of brassica here in my zone. Because we typically don't have a spring season. Because... The show so short it usually goes from cold cool to hot there is no slightly warm weather here if, if we get there it's maybe only about a week before it gets hot so 
it's never really something I thought about when in our area it's always getting for the spring is always time to get prepared for the summer garden but I have a spring garden this year and it's helped me learn that yeah I can have that spring garden I just have to rethink how I how I do things and how I plan things from the traditional way so don't be afraid to experiment don't be afraid to fail and when you do fail yeah you get disappointed we all do but don't give up on yourself try again because who knows what success you'll have right around the corner okay guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up i'm gonna yeah, give becky for so joining me and i will see you on the next video in peace and good health i'm nikki nicole bye